I was today scrolling through Instagram and looking at Astra pictures. No, actually looking at a lot of advertisements and in between some Astra pictures. But anyway, while looking at them, I saw some real beauties like this here or this here or this one or this one. Beautiful pictures, right? They're beautiful as long as you do not look at the stars. And when looking at the stars, I got just this little tiny bit nauseous. I mean, let's agree on something. Pink and light blue belong in gender reveal parties, nurseries, stuff you buy for children below three years, and that's about it. But where it definitely do not belong is on star pictures. So how can we get all the ugliness out of the stars and make them decent? This is what this video is all about. Stay tuned. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. As you have probably already figured out, stars are really important to me. A good star quality. Too many times stars are overlooked and this is especially the case when we do narrowband shooting. Because when we do narrowband shooting, more than not, the combination of the narrowband channels leads to ugly star colors, from pink to light blue to magenta to green. And in some cases, the color calibration can rescue us, but in a lot of cases, all hope is lost. And as these pictures, which I showed at the beginning, nicely display, even seasoned astrophotographers, these are accounts with over 10,000 viewers, which I picked the pictures from. Even they sometimes feel like, okay, so this is how it is now, and I'll leave the stars in a pink, a blue, or whatever. And personally, and perhaps it's only me, I have some issues with that. So let's go now to PixInsight and look at seven different methods, how you can actually rescue the star colors, or at least make them as less ugly as possible. So welcome to PixInsight. I prepared here something for you. This is the test shot of the Orion Nebula, which I recently did to test the Asgard Column Magic D2 filter, which records O3 and S2. So what we have here is the HA part of the Entlia ALPT dual narrowband filter. And then we have here the O3 from the Color Magic filter, and we have here the S2 of the Color Magic filter. So it's like mono shooting, we have from each emission one picture. I already did some rough background extraction and I did a linear fit so that they're all the same bright, and that's all that I did to them. So, what we want to do, we want to now focus on what happens when we color combine them together. For that, I opened the channel combination tool. So let's start with the most regular one. So we put HA in red, then we put the O3 in green and the S2 in blue. So let's run it. And that's how it looks like. And we got green stars. So we call this HOS. Let's minimize it. Next situation, we actually don't have an S2, so what we're doing is HOO, and that looks like that, and we have bluish stars. As a third and last option, we want to do Hubble palette, so we go S, H, O. We run it again, and to make the horror parade perfect, we have now pinkish stars. So let's have a look now at the whole horror parade. Greenish, bluish, pinkish stars, that's what we get when we combine narrowband data. And so with that, let's start thinking about what we can do about them. So I stated we have seven different options from my perspective, what we can do. And let's start with the best one. And the best one is remove the stars and shoot dedicated stars, either with no filter, with a light pollution filter, or in a case that you have a mono camera with RGB filters. Use short exposures, 20, 30 seconds, so that there's definitely no guiding error. Stretch them separately with combined arcs in and general hyperbolic stretch. Definitely use 
SPCC, and you will have the most accurate, most beautiful stars imaginable. And just as an example, this is a picture that I did like that. And this is even before Blur Exterminator existed. So from my perspective, whenever possible, this is the way to go. And by the way, you can do this retrospectively. So if you have a picture like that, and you did not shoot any dedicated stars, nobody's stopping you, except the clouds, of going out tonight and shooting them, and then combining them with this picture. And that's actually the situation here. When I was shooting this test, the clouds came in and didn't have any time anymore to shoot the stars. But I will still do that as soon as we have a clear night again. And then I also have my dedicated stars. With that, let's come to the option number two. And the option number two is to just remove the stars, full stop. Especially with dominant nebulas like the Orion here, who feels the whole picture as I have 1350 millimeters. It doesn't really matter. These few stars are they on or off. Nobody cares. And sometimes it actually, a nebula looks even more beautiful when there are no stars around. So I'd rather have no stars than ugly stars. And that's exactly what I did in this case, given I didn't had already shot my dedicated stars. I simply removed them and here's the picture. Without the stars, I feel it looks beautiful as it is. Now the third method only works with these two pictures. And that's it using color calibration in the form of SPCC and praying that this removes this color cast. That works sometimes, but not always. Especially if it's too strong, it will not work. And in my special case here, it doesn't work because SPCC, even I could plate solve the picture, SPCC does simply not recognize my stars. So there are not enough stars on these pictures that SPCC would work. And so I can also not demonstrate you here the effect. I have tried it with other pictures and it's really a 50-50% chance that with that amount of color cast, SPCC can really do something about it. Usually then the nebula gets nice, but the stars stay a mess. And with that, we come to number four to six. And four to six are dedicated measures to remove a specific color. And in all of these cases, before we do something like that, we actually separate the stars from the nebula. For that, I use star exterminator, Remember to have selected the generate star image because that's really what we need. So in the meantime, I have in all three pictures actually removed the stars. And here we have them, the green one, the blue ones, and the red ones. So let's start with the green ones. What could we do with them to make them less green? Oh yeah, there's SCNR, right? So we take the SCNR, we throw it on there, and they are less green. So one issue solved. Next one, what do we do about the magenta ones? We have actually two options. The one is a very innovative one. We go to image invert. That inverts the picture. Let's just stretch it again. And what colors do the stars now have? Green. Oh yeah, there's SCNR, right? Let's take SCNR again, throw it on there. Then we invert the picture again, stretch it again. And it's now obviously overstretched, but you see that the pink cast is gone. So that's one option. And we would afterwards stretch them decently and then they also look decent. The other possibility that we have with pink stars is a script called correct magenta stars. We can even actually choose here a mask, but given that we actually have only stars in there, it's okay. Here you click on execute, that is done. And as you can see, also the pink has gone. So with the blue stars, we can also use SCNR. We go on blue, throw it on there, and it's now a little bit more green. We try it on green again, and it's about okay. So these are the options that we have, and I hate all of them. <laughs> Because, especially here, 
this is still way too blue. This, this star is halfway blue. Here we have some green outside. Look at this here, this whole mess here. Here's some, here we have some yellow. Here we have some, uh, some, some blue, which is way too strong out of whatever reason. Here's some green. This one, the HOS is the, is the most decent one. But even here, I mean, these, these star colors, they're not accurate. Just, just be clear about that. This is just some, some random colors now, which are residuals of the, of the color cost that we had. These processes have the purpose to make the stuff less ugly, but they don't make it good. And it also doesn't look good. It look, looks just a little bit better than if you leave it like before. So for me, all of that is an absolute no. And I will close this now down, except of one. So we leave one of these star masks. And the seventh option is, I think, my invention. I don't know if anybody else has already done it this way. It can be. But this is how I would do it if I do not shoot the dedicated stars. And I really want to have stars in this picture. And if SPCC doesn't deliver any decent um, results, that's also an option. So if you or a child looks up in the sky, just briefly, what would you say is the color of the stars? Some draw it as a yellow. Some say it's close to white. Somewhere it's between white and yellow, right? Just have a brief glimpse. So if we can paint all these stars in a yellowish white it's about okay right it's definitely not what we what we want but it's not ugly it's something the human eye can work with so the, how do we achieve that and that's actually surprisingly easy seeing you know how everybody tries desperately to to remove these colors and all you really have to do is you go to image extract lightness and hello all we have now is white. Now you will say this still looks hideous and this still looks hideous because it's overstretched. So I will stretch this now just to show you the rest of it. And before I actually I'm stretching it, I let Blur Exterminator run over it so that we have some nice, decent stars. And here we go. Blur Exterminator has done its job. So now we have to stretch it that we actually see what we have done. And I just did a short stretch on this one. So we have now stretch stars. So now how do we get the color in here? Because just having it white like it is now also looks very unnatural. So it would still not look good. So the first thing we have to do is, and you can see it here, it's called gray because this is a grayscale picture, the luminance picture. And on a grayscale picture, you cannot put colors on. So we go to image, color space, convert to RGB color. And that's done. And now we have a color picture. Great. So the next thing we need to do, we need to create a range mask. I already did that with the range selection tool. I throw it on here so that only the stars are unprotected. And now we give them the color with the curves transformation tool. So we open a preview. So how it works is we go on green. And we increase the greenish value a tiny little bit. We go on red and we do exactly the same. And what happens now is that the stars get a little bit yellow. We can actually, given the stars are pretty bright, we can for both do that a little bit more up here. And that's already enough. So we don't want that to be a freak show. We just want to have it a little bit yellow because that looks much more natural. With that, we will execute that and close it down. And these are our stars now. Now, what we would like to see is how it looks like together with these pictures. They're obviously not color calibrated, They've done nothing with them. So, but still just to get an idea and I will do just a quick and dirty um, stretch. Okay, so they're now all stretched. So we can go now to pixel mass. And this is the formula that I use to um, to recombine stars into a picture that's the inverse formula that star ex exterminator uses to remove them so here we have to replace starless now with the picture that we want for example hoo then i can actually throw that on here 
So now I think here in the HOO, it looks absolutely fine. Here in the HOS, we could even get them a little bit more yellow and that would actually look even better. But again, they're not color calibrated. And here in the SHO, well, we might have to make them a little bit more bluish, whatever, to, to get them to look natural. But that's the great part. You can now actually yourself adjust it a little bit until it feels fine for you. And you are 100% in control of what you're doing and you do not have any artifacts which just stick there. So the bottom line of the whole thing is, if your stars are that bad that SPCC cannot help them, and you still really want to use them, then this method explained now is probably your best bet to get to decent stars. It might need a little bit of experimenting, which star color looks then the most natural, but you probably will get to something decent. I would not recommend using this other method with SNCR, with this uh, magenta correct script, as it leads to artifacts and residuals, which just look ugly. But again, to conclude this session, your best bet is to shoot the stars separately. So I hope this was helpful. If you would like to have these tips in written with the exact processes and the procedures, have a look at my Patreon channel, link is below. Already with the entry level, you get access to my document repository where I have a lot of processes and tips all to download. See you next time and clear skies.